Hi, man, John Strong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Today, I have a new DC power supply that's here to replace the ones I have on my bench, which are probably at least two decades old each, one, maybe even three. So this is something you can get on Amazon. I'm going to just pop it out of the box <laughs> off camera because it's a little bit large. There we go. And it does have a manual leads. Nice metal case, power. It's got everything you need. And there we are. I selected this one because it was reasonable and it supposedly has a 10 amp output, which I find it hard to believe. It's very light. It's a Uniroy DC power supply. So let's have a quick look. There are some instructions here. I, I, I do believe there's a calibration for the overcurrent where you, you short it and you turn the overcurrent. We'll play that in a minute. But I'm more curious about looking inside this just because it's so light. Let's crack the seals on this bad boy. The moment of truth. Hey! Wow, look at that. Now that is definitely a switching power supply. Look, it looks like an inverter, like you get on a welder these days. And I'm really pleased. I'll tell you why I'm really pleased, because what I don't like about this, and I've really got used to, it's having power supplies that have a switchable output. So the reason you want one of those is that you can leave your equipment hooked on, but the output turned off, so that way you can turn it on adjust the settings then when you're ready flick the switch to put power onto the output here otherwise of course you're relying entirely on what you left it set up before you turned it off and i think that's dangerous i've been eyeballing it up for a while now and i think i've pretty much got the main areas sorted i'm gonna hold it at a weird angle because it's a strange shape but you have this here, an input stage here. So that's coming, your main's coming in. And it's going through this rectifier there and conditioning components. And that's jumping across to this switch mode power supply section there. And look at that, look at that beefy guy. That's some big beefy MOSFET type device. And then it comes along to here. And these are two resistors here. So it's measuring the currents. So this is part of the current measuring stuff here, I believe. And then there's your output right there where my finger is pointing. And that's what just takes you straight to these connections on the front. So it does seem like we should be able to interrupt those. And I have been looking through and I found something that was given me by Howard, Howard Taylor, uh, Dubious Engineering. And it's this snazzy switch. So I did have a quick check on the case and it does seem that there is room to put that switch behind there right next to this other one. And then you've got a cho choice of knobs and I think that's probably better than that. I like, I like this one's kind of cool, but it's a bit bulky and I think you'd get fed up of twiddling that all the time. But I think what we'll do now, let's just power it on and see what it actually does before we modify anything. I've got it powered on, been playing with it. Don't run it like this, by the way, with the chassis open, because if your fingers go near that section, or maybe even near this section, you might get a shock. In fact, you will get a shock, don't do that. Um, there is a fan in there. The fan does move momentarily when you turn it on, but then it stops. So I guess the fan only kicks in when it's really needed, which is cool. And then if you look at the front here, you do have a couple of knobs. You've got the voltage selection knob and you have the current selection knob. So it's multi-turn pot. And while there's no load connected, hence the idea of having that switch could be useful, you can just adjust your voltage. So let's say, for example, we have this down to, oh, I don't know, six volts. I do have a drill on here connected. And then if I turn on the drill, now you'll see when I turn it on, the voltage will drop. That's because of the current. So if we reduce the current allowed, and I turn it on again, You'll see here now, 
it's trying to draw too much current and it's pulling the voltage down. And as we twist the current adjuster there, in here we can get going. There we are. So there is um, scope there to play with this. I would prefer it if you adjust the current knob though, it would tell you what the current limit is. Uh, just something to get used to. But I definitely think that switch there would be immensely useful to me. The reason being, I leave all of these things here hooked up with all the equipment all the time. I don't have to keep unplugging stuff to mess around with it. Probably should be taking a little bit more care with this, but, but, always a but. Let's see what we can do. So the switch we're going to use is just a plain one. We're not going to use that military type switch. So if we put it in line with that, that looks kind of okay, but will it be able to take this plate? Because that plate would be very useful for us to know if it's on or off. That would be fine too. That's pretty good. And what's nice is this has a keyway on it to make sure it goes on one way so that it can only be the on off position. So what I'm going to do is get my Sharpe and I'm going to mark a point that I think is more or less, I could use a ruler, in fact I do have a ruler here, we'll do that, more or less equidistant between these two objects, um, <laughs> which alarmingly, so if that is coming up to 50 edge to edge, we'd say 25, but 25 doesn't look right because it's where it says voltage, so I'm just going to go here. I think that should be fine. I'm going to turn it over though, make sure we're not too near that other switch. We're going to be right, butting right up to it in there. You can just see it in there. We're going to be butting right up to it, but I think we'll be okay. A stepped bit in here. Let's see how many steps we want to take. So I believe this is a handy tip, by the way. Get a pen. Mark out the step you want to stop at like that. So then when you're using it, you can see a darker line. So I'm just going to drill that hole. Oh, hello. So there, it's just starting there. That'll be neat enough for me. Now I'm going to leave this down like that. I know I'd want to show you the drilling part, but if I slip with this, it's going to be a nightmare. And there's lots of wires behind there too. I'm going to hold them out of the way. I need my hand free. Be very careful after the first hole because these tend to go jung, 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 straight through. Okay, there we go. We're almost there. Just check we weren't rubbing on anything. Now that's looking really close. I'm just going to do a trial in there. Yeah, next size. The next size was the size we marked, so that's fine. Let's get that out of the way. So that's what we ended up with. And that's fitting like that. Nice. So I'm going to put it in from the back. Although we probably need to wire it up first, but I just want to put it in, make sure it fits. You can get it in from the back. And it does, look at that. I'm gonna zoom in, see if you can see that. That is a nice snug fit. It's just missing all the things it needs to miss. <laughs> just gonna undo the live wire now from inside. And if you are doing this, by the way, make sure your switch is appropriately rated. That is a 10 amp switch. So I doubt we're ever gonna be running this at the maximum 10 amps for very long. You want at least the rating of your unit. I'm going to need some better tools to get that out. So we'll just take that out from there. Again, avoid touching any of the circuit boards. There are capacitors and stuff on there. They might have some charge in them. Best left untested, really. <laughs> just get that wire out. And that's going to be one side of our switch. It shouldn't matter which side at all of our switch that goes on. So that's nice and easy. In fact, let's hook that up. And we're going to make another one that goes from the switch to the output there. 
nice and simple. Now it's up to you, but you are mounting this switch next to the switch that runs the mains. So if you're anyway concerned about it, make sure you get some heat shrink over both of these ends. You definitely don't want any of that getting to your fingers. And as it turns out, <laughs> I'm actually using this as well. So it is insulated, but it shouldn't really be a problem, but you are sitting next to it, so mm, be careful. Suitable. I found a suitable piece of cable. Hopefully it's good enough. If you are doing this yourself, please make sure you use something of a suitable thickness, but uh, I can't tell you what that thickness is because I haven't looked it up, but I just eyeballed this. This looks pretty thick. So I've got some ring terminals here. I've got two sizes actually. I've got these little teeny ones, which I think are probably a bit better for one end. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use a teeny one for the switch end and a fatter one for the output end because the output end has to go round a nut and just if you've got your Halford set by the way this is what happens to the lid of something if you spill acetone on it warped it look totally warped it um, just these standard crimps will do you could probably make a loop and solder a, you add a bit of solder make a loop and then solder that if you want I mean it's got to be good enough and that's a little little fit in there Let's do the other end it's not too bad is it and it's actually New Year's Eve today. In just a few hours, it'll all be over. We'll all be able to go outside again. The moment of truth. Will it fit on the switch? Hopefully. I think we'll be okay. Tiny bit fiddly, but nothing, nothing too technical. We'll be okay. Just going to fish it through the front there. Come on, you know you want to go in there. That's looking pretty smart. Just going to add our little plate here. And, oh, we did have a nut. I'm curious on how this goes. Does that replace the nut if you use that, I wonder? Hmm. It's got a vibe of yes, but it does have a gasket too. I shall try that. Don't want to stretch the material too much. I'm just being a bit ginger. Come on. Ooh, not bad. It's a little bit wonk. I can unwonk it. Now the ultra fiddly bit, of course, of getting this output onto that bolt there. tricky but at least we got it started now that was a bit horrible I have to admit it's not much room you could just take the front plate off though if you need that little bit of extra room and get a good job on that I think that's okay we'll just nip that up now and I do believe that is that so you've got it hooked there you can see it's coming around here to the switch and then it's coming from the switch back to the board and there's a nice air gap between all of that so the mains and this switch are pretty far apart Anyway, I think we're not going to have an issue with that. So on, off. I think I'm going to test it, though, before I put the case on. So you can see it's now powered on. You can power it on independently. It's in the off position. You can see it's set to 9 volts. So we can set the voltage. So we'll say we'll set it to 7. Dink, more or less. Then we're going to turn it on. Yes. Something you notice when you buy this, of course, is that it comes with two of these, and these are crocodile clips connected to these sort of Y-shaped terminals, which I'm not really keen on. I do prefer the more banana connector terminals, but this is a very thick wire, and I suspect that's the 
any terminal would fit in unless they wanted to do something expensive or, or custom. So what I thought would be fun to do though, just because we do have it sitting on the bench, and it's a little bit of a test here, but I've got this piece of wire and I'm going to short the wire between those two outputs. And again, I'm glad we have a switch on the front so we can switch this thing on and off before we uh, apply the power now. Get to adjust everything before we apply it. Now the pots on the front for the voltage and current are multi-turn pots. They do seem to have an awful lot of turning in them. Now I'll show you that now. So if you can imagine, we are in the off position now, so there's no power going to that shorted piece of wire. But you can see, maybe a bit easier if I turn it all the way to the off position, and I'm going to put a little dot of Sharpie. We've got this, we've got this dot at the 11 o'clock position now. So as I twist it, so that's one turn, two turns, three turns, four turns. <laughs> Five turns. So there's a five turn pot there. <laughs> there's a lot of adjustment and the current is the same. So I think what we should do is we should put it down to, let's say, a reasonable 15 volts. And the current is probably all the way off now. It is now. I'm going to turn it on, see what happens. Oops. Interestingly, you see, because there's no current, it's like the voltage side has already. <laughs> tripped out so it's, it's moving between constant current and constant voltage modes so this is something we need to look in the book really to figure out how that how that actually works but we'll leave it there again 14.75 volts and we're going to turn it on bang and you can see the voltage went straight down and it said it's drawing one amp through that piece of wire so that wire there should be drawing an amp so as we turn this up what happens as we start turning this up Ooh, you can see we've got three amps going through. That voltage isn't going up, you know. I mean, it's, it's fighting it. There should be a point where it bursts into flames. Eight amps. So there we are, we hit our limit and Oh, a little bit of wire isn't even warm. That's disappointing. I was expecting a mad flurry of flames. So yeah, I don't know really what our useful output is on this. Oh, our switch is gone. Is our switch melted? I think our switch was doing a lot of the heavy lifting in that. I might have um, misjudged this thing, actually, because check this out. It is definitely capable of giving us a bit of an arc there. Oh. There you have it, a new bench power supply for a new year with my little modification. I'm going to be playing with this. It's going to probably feature in all upcoming videos in one way or another as I get used to it, but I'm going to report back in on this if it starts playing up or any features that I discover along the way. If you're interested in one, they are on Amazon. I got this for about £50. Any links I have, I'll put down below. If I don't speak to you before, Happy New Year!